Have you ever thought of doing any AC work on your RV? Got it all set up and cute and ready to go. This has been one of our uh, first days in the last couple of days without rain, so maybe I can even get on the roof a little bit later and do some work to the AC and maybe the uh, vent fan. We'll see. The sous chef in me has got uh, all the veggies prepped. And I'm ready to go. Where might this fall in your comfort zone? A couple packages came in. Looks like I'm going to have to get started on that uh, front AC. Now I'm not talking about recharging the refrigerant in your unit or getting into something like replacing an entire unit. However, with the right tools and equipment, I guess almost anything is possible. No, I'm thinking of something a whole lot easier. By the laws of Murphy, these things, anything, always wants to fail at the most inopportune moments. Yeah, like you're camping in Arizona and the weather is expected to be hotter later in the day and throughout the summer. No, what I've got in mind is something way more simple, like a bad run or fan motor capacitor, or uh, failing bearings in that fan motor. Something that's pretty much plug and play, if you have a healthy respect for electricity. There's your problem right there, Vern. Sitting in the wire right there. It's like a little shuttle. Oh, Lord, and my daddy used to work on me. You know, like when you're messing around with it, you turn off the units at the thermostat and the circuit breakers, and then disconnect your shoreline from the pedestal and kill your solar power at the switch? Hey, of course, if you're a technician or have a lot of experience around electricity, you probably don't need to go to these extremes. I just don't want to get a rude surprise. So why wouldn't you consider doing the easier things when it comes to maintenance? Well, in our Coleman Mach 13,500 BTU unit, the local RV suppliers want 350 bucks just for the motor and another $50 for the capacitor, then probably about three hours book time for the labor, which could be anywhere near $150 an hour or about 450 bucks or not too far below about 1K to do the job. We have a hungry service dog to feed, so we could definitely use that money elsewhere. Besides, look at the price of groceries. Let me make one thing absolutely clear. We are not experts or technicians and are not in any way qualified to teach anyone how to do this repair. So that you all know this is a how we did it and not how to do it. Every manufacturer is different and each model can be different. Do your research and when in doubt, get help from those in the know. Why are we replacing the motor? Well, last year, the motor in the rear unit, another Coleman, but uh, a heat pump, it's a 15,500 BTU unit, bearings failed and we replaced it. This one, after running for a few minutes, began squealing, which progressively gets worse. So up on the roof, I took the cover off and snapped a picture of the sticker on the motor with the info, model number, etc. Then to the computer to research. Like I said, prices ran for anywhere from $350 to one place offering it for $97 with the capacitor and a two-day delivery. I immediately ordered it. We'll leave a link below for their website. It came as promised, but then rained here for two days. Arizona, or maybe Murphy. When it stopped, I got out the tools I thought I'd need and went up to bring the motor down to work on and prep the new one.
There are a few tricks and tips. The new motor should match the specs on the sticker as the old one. It should be a through shaft. The shaft should stick out on both ends. The fan will be on the longer part. You can see before disassembly and the short holds the squirrel cage. <laughs> and it's mounted to a plate that has five screws that hold it to the forward box. It's the evaporator as well as color-coded wires, the same as the old. Are you sure you're gonna do this? Then open the electrical panel here and use an insulated screwdriver to short between the terminals of each of the capacitors. Go back to the motor side and snip all the wires from the motor. That's about six to 10 inches away from the motor itself. There's either a 5 16th or a 5 32nd Allen screw that holds a clamp that holds the fan near the condenser on the long shaft, the outside coils. Before the fan comes off, use either a grease pencil or a Sharpie to mark on the blades where they line up with the cowling for later realignment. The fan on the motor shaft, carefully remove it and the clamp. Then slide the fan blade off the shaft and tuck it in the cowling itself. Remove the three screws that hold the motor stabilizer to the base of the AC and one 5 16th socket or 5 32nd socket for the nut on the back bottom of the motor and two Phillips heads at the base of the AC. Don't lose any of the screws or nut. Then the five screws, they're Phillips, that hold the motor plate to the evaporator box. Leave the upper center one for last. Once out and you're supporting the motor, gently and slowly pull the motor back and turn it while extracting the short shaft and squirrel cage from the box. Now lower the plate, motor and cage to the ground very gently. That cage is fragile. Ah, fragile. It must be Italian. Go down and place the motor on your work surface. Measure the distance from the mounting plate to the back of the cage, squirrel cage. Ours was one and one eighth inch. Take the cage off slowly. Turn the cage till you can see the back side or Allen wrench side of the clamp, similar to the one that was on the fan. If you turn the cage to where you're looking through the paddles, you'll see that one appears to have half of its length missing. That's deliberate. Use the short side of the Allen wrench to break the screw loose. Then you use the long side by sticking it through that missing part of the cage to spin it off. Remove the clip. Now with your 5 seconds inch socket in hand, look at the backing plate. The evaporator side is covered with a thin rubberized material. Some folks say to gently peel it off and re-glue it when done. The sun out here has baked mine in place. So I use a pin knife to make a small tear in the rubber foam above the nuts, then stick my quarter inch drive deep socket in and back the four nuts off. Piece of cake. Get your new motor and line it up with the backing plate. It has a lot of holes, but you can see which ones was used before. Just so you know, remember that three screws hold the top and two the bottom when mounting back to the evaporator box. There is also one bolt that sticks out the other side, the back side of the motor, that needs to be oriented to the bottom as well as the wires are at the bottom. That's where the support bracket mounts to. Put the squirrel cage back on and measure the distance to the back of the cage. For us, like I said, it was one and one eighth inch. Put the clip and Allen screw back on so that you can access it through the altered blade. Recheck its spacing, then tighten it back down. Take your new composition up to the top of your RV. We use 550 cord to pull it up with. Be careful, fragile. Then angle the cage gently into the opening and long shaft towards the condenser and carefully start that center screw at the top of the plate. Start all the others, then snug them down. Reconnect the rear stabilizer bracket. If you've done it right, it will be on the bottom. Snug it down. 
Move the last fan clamp onto the shaft. Line up the fan blade so that it slides on the flat part of the shaft and carefully eyeball your marks to the cowling. Replace the clamp, recheck placement, and snug it down. Wiring. Pull the wires you initially cut through the puttied hole in the electrical connection box. Then guide the ones from the new motor through following the old ones. Two of them will have female spade connectors on them. Those connect to the new capacitor that came with the motor. Undo the plumber's tape that holds the capacitors in that box and pull the capacitor out that has the clipped wires still connected. Check to see if there is a polarity mark on the old or the new. Usually there's not. If not, just put the new wires with female spade connectors on each pole of the new capacitor, like the old. Either of the four male spades, uh, there's four of them on each pole, one wire to each pole. Just look at the old one. Put the capacitor back into the plumber's tape and use either a closer or further hole if needed for fit. And now, one by one, either butt splice or crimp cap each new wire to its matching color wire after removing the appropriate amount of insulation from the ones you clipped the ends off of in the electrical box. Almost done. Get on the phone and have your inside helper reset breakers, turn on the power, and then turn on the thermostat. It should start right up. If you have any doubts, for gosh sakes, cut the power and call a technician. Now that it's working, have your helper turn it off again and pick up your tools. Don't leave anything inside. Then reinstall the covers and carefully reinstall the four screws that hold it on. Hand tighten, making absolutely sure you haven't cross-threaded those screws. That's it. You just saved yourself somewhere short of a thousand bucks. Good job. It seems daunting until you've done it once. Then you'll be kicking yourself in the pants for not doing it sooner. We sure hope that this has been informative and entertaining. See you again next week, right here on OLT. Please, travel safe.